Hi there, Dr. Stu here to answer some of your questions. Today we're going to do a Q&A session um, just to answer some of the questions that have been sent in uh, via the website. Um, so I'm going to answer a couple of the short questions today. Um, and so let's get to our questions. Dear Dr. Stu, can mosquitoes spread the coronavirus? Well, this, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, this virus is a respiratory virus. It is spread via respiratory droplets. The respiratory droplets and aerosols come out of our mouth. Um, they land on surfaces and we infect ourselves or we breathe the droplets in. There's no evidence to show that this is a bloodborne disease which mosquitoes um, can spread. Remember, the mosquito spreads disease by biting you sucking a little bit, of, feeding on a little bit of your blood, and then when it goes to the next person and bites them, it sticks a little bit of the, that blood into the new person. And that's how some of the disease, the bloodborne diseases are spread. And there's some good examples of bloodborne diseases like, for example, malaria. Um, however, this virus does not seem to be one of those viruses. This is a respiratory virus. So I would be very surprised if we see any widespread mosquito spread for this virus. Second question, can hair dryers kill the coronavirus? Apparently there's some folks that are using hair dryers to heat up the room or heat up surfaces. Um, it's not a great way to kill the virus. If you're trying to cl kill a, clean a surface, we recommend that you use a cleaning solution. Any of the cleaning solutions are good. On a previous video, we talked about using dilute Clorox solution or Lysol or any household cleaning product. Using your hair dryer is not a good way to kill the virus. If you're trying to use it on yourself, your skin or something to kill the virus, you would burn yourself before it got hot enough uh, to actually kill the virus. So that's not a great way to deal with the virus um, using your hair dryer. Last question. Uh, this comes from Brian. I am definitely in the high risk group. 60s, in my 60s, a cancer survivor, diabetes, overweight. And I was wondering, if I contract, if I contract COVID-19, how low should I allow my oxygen saturation to drop before I really need to head to the local emergency department? Well, Brian, that's a pretty complicated question. And I'm not really set up here to answer individual medical questions. Um, it sounds like you have a very complex medical history. But here's some general guidance. Because I don't know where your oxygen saturation or oxygen level normally is. So it's hard to tell you what level you can get to. But in general, if your oxygen level drops to the low 90s and you're normally in the high 90s, that would be something with your past history that I would say you should be seen by somebody quickly. Also, even if your, your oxygen saturation drops just a couple of points, like three, two or three percentage points consistently, if it's downward trending and you have this past medical history, we'd want you to be seen quickly because people with high risk background like you don't have so much the age high risk, although you are getting to that place where age becomes important. 60, 60 or 65 gets to put you in a higher risk um, group, but you have other underlying conditions. So if you're seeing a drop in your oxygen saturation, we don't want you to get into trouble quickly. People have a, some people with lots of comorbidities, lots of underlying medical problems can get into trouble very quickly. So if you're having any respiratory distress, or you see your oxygen saturation dropping a couple of points, or if you're getting down toward the low 90s, then you need to be seen quickly. Thanks so much for asking those questions. If you have a question, go to drstu.org. You can submit your questions. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you the next time.